Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Kobe from Sanitarium Productions. Back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. Today we're looking at the uh, DVD Battles box set, set 105 for the Mass Device. This set came out in 2008, if I remember correctly. Um, it was, uh, again, one of five. They kind of all centered around a single included DVD. So it was like the uh, mini series that they came out with or an extended series, whatever it was. And the box set kind of uh, tried to capture the essence of whatever that particular episode was that was going on here. So this one was the mass device uh, and it's pretty cool. They did a really nice job on the package in here. You got a nice window box. The included DVD is over here. Flip this around to the back side. You can see the actual uh, piece of the mass device. So this is the collect and connect kind of concept here. You get five different pieces in the five different box sets and it makes one giant assembled device kind of thing. So uh, the other set we've looked at in the past with uh what was it uh, revenge of cobra <laughs> down here uh so in this set we get a cool snake eyes figure we get a cobra trooper we get the baroness in her uh diving outfit and we get a stalker figure so pretty cool let's go ahead and just open this thing up and uh, see what we got This particular set is, uh, it was one of the first ones that came out, so it isn't really all that difficult to come by. Um, for whatever reason, they made a bunch of these. It uh, typically goes for around uh, 30 bucks or so, so, you know, mileage will vary. But not difficult to get a hold of this particular one anymore. And for whatever reason, it's is being stupid coming out so <laughs> there we go we'll toss the box to the side and we got some cool packaging here to look at uh, the figures themselves just kind of uh, oh, they're in here somehow we'll figure that out in a second uh, the DVD is taped in so we'll just go ahead and cut the tape off of that It's a pretty cool little DVD set here. Um, we're not going to review the actual movie itself, but it's uh, five parts, if I remember correctly, for the mass device. Oh, yeah, it says right there, five-part miniseries. So pretty cool. If you have the uh, any of the other box sets, this was already included, so you don't really need the set to get the episodes, but it's nice that they throw it in there for you. So little bonus thing. We get the instruction sheet here. For the mass device. We have a cool little insert here. Let's see if we can unfold this thing. And it looks like it's got just a bunch of the uh, 25th anniversary figures and sets and vehicles and everything on it. So that's pretty cool. Flatten it out a little bit here. So it's got a couple of the Comic 2 packs on it, the uh, DVD battle packs, uh, the three and three quarter inch figures, and some of the vehicles over here. So a nice insert. And on the front, we get a cool little diorama picture. You can see that a little bit better there. That's pretty nice. Nothing too extraordinary. Uh, it folds up pretty crazily though, so. <laughs> and close enough. Over on the side, we have the actual uh, mass device piece here with these canisters that are falling off. Put those back in there. Very nice. This is the uh, the console for the mass device. And again, it does have these removable pieces on it. We'll look at those a little bit more in depth here in a second. But uh, there's that piece. And let's just uh, go ahead and flip this over. 
We've got uh, some of the accessory pieces here on the back side. They're all taped in. So let's go ahead and cut the tape off of this to get this out. Hasbro loves their tape. So we got the uh, file cards in one part. Get the tape off of it too. File cards and the little accessory pack, which we will jump into here in a moment when we look at the actual figures. Uh, these look like mostly just the battle stands. I don't know if we actually have any accessories in here or not, but uh, we'll look at that a little closer here in a moment. On the back side, we've got these little plastic tabs that have to be cut apart for the tape. And we'll cut the uh, tape on the other part of this so the plastic will just slide right through, theoretically. Alrighty. So now we just flip these tabs up and kind of push them in a little bit to get them started. Flip it back over to the other side. And now this tray should just lift out. Perfect. And the rest of this is now uh, recycling material. I do have a nice kind of cut out here in the center of the uh, G.I. Joe team after blowing a hole in a wall. <laughs> Anyways, we don't need that now. The figures themselves are rubber banded and twist tied in. So let's go ahead and clear that mess up to start with. Just uh, slice the rubber bands. They're kind of breaking anyways due to age. Kind of hard to uh, realize that these were, uh, what, 10 years ago now? 2008 and 2018. A couple of these are the metal twist ties, so we'll snip those. That should take care of it. Now let's just start prying these things out. So we get a cool looking timber to go with uh, snake eyes here. Uh, some of these things are also taped in a little bit. The gun here on snake eyes and the gun on stalker. And there's some crazy tape thing going on here with uh, this uh, sled cart thing. So we'll figure that out here in a second. Uh, pull out the gun here. Pop snake eyes out. Uh, this is a pretty interesting uh, version of snake eyes here. It's... Uh, in the mass device little mini series here, he kind of got uh, doused with the radiation and uh, they've attempted here to kind of uh, simulate that by making him glow orange in places. So it's kind of cool. It's a nice effect. Pull out the Cobra Trooper here. Get him to let go of the uh, buggy cart thing that he's got. Some. Uh, Crazy rubber bands holding his arms in place. Pull that off real quick. There we go. Pretty traditional uh, Cobra Trooper here. Get these rubber bands off. It's a, a nice little deco here. Some white highlights. His uh, assault rifle here is taped in, so slice that tape off and pull his gun out. Then let's go ahead and grab Stalker here. 
comes out relatively easily actually. It's uh, storming outside. That's what you hear in the background there. And we got this crazy rubber metal twist tie thing on there. So there's Stalker. He comes with a cool jump pack. We got the Baroness here in her Cobra Frog suit. Pretty cool. And uh, this, whatever this thing was, <laughs> some kind of uh, scientific thing. And now we got to figure out how to get this tray thing off. Uh, it has some kind of like weird, uh, not tape, but oh, maybe it is tape. Anyway, something on here holding this plastic in. And I think it is actually tape. So slice it off and pull it apart as best we can. And then push these little plastic tab things through the opening. And then that should just lift right out. So there we are. <clears throat> and you also got these uh, cool little elemental pieces that come with it. Uh, the uh, pieces that make up the um, the mass device power system, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, there is all the uh, packaging stuff dealt with now. Uh, this rubber band here is still being aggravating here. So as you notice, these things uh, don't really stay in place very good. They're just kind of sit in place. There is a little notch in the uh, tray. So there we go. So here are the figures. And we will uh, go ahead and zoom in all these things and uh, take a look at them individually now. So stick with us. Let's look at the file cards that come with this. Uh, it comes in a nice little sealed bag here, taped together. Slice the tape off. And pull these out. We've got Snake Eyes, the Cobra Trooper, the Baroness, and Sergeant Stalker. Uh, these are pretty nice. They have the black backing on them. Uh, other than that, they're pretty well standard file cards for the uh, 25th anniversary line so yeah cool next up we have the accessory pack which is basically just the battle stands uh, piece of tape holding it together so let's just cut the tape off and just dump this out so we have snake eyes so this is a uh, just generic 25th anniversary battle stand got one for the Baroness um, for whatever reason the Cobra ones almost always seem to come with just a single foot peg on them I don't really know why they did that but they did still has the nice symbol on the top of it raised the Cobra Trooper and Stalker so these are pretty nice they're uh, Pretty well standard, nothing really special, but uh, they're awesome that they do include them, so yay for more battle stands. Here we have the piece of the mass device. This is the control console. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's kind of standard. Uh, got some nice detail work in it, some nice computery bits and screens and stuff. <laughs> and uh, it's got these cool little canisters here for the uh, elements to attached to. Uh, they come without any elements in them, so it's uh, kind of depleted. Um, in some of the later 25th anniversary releases, they actually uh, released some figures with the canisters with different elements in them, so you can uh, get those and they will attach to this thing, which is kind of cool. Uh, it does look really nice there. It's uh, 
kind of a shame that they uh, actually don't have anything in them right now, so, yeah. But, and I don't actually remember which characters actually came with them. I know one of the Cobra Commanders did, and I honestly don't remember the rest of them. So, if anybody remembers off your top of your head, drop a comment down below to let us know so we can go out there and find those and attach them. But, uh, pretty basic design here. It will attach with the rest of everything else that's going on, and, uh, once you collect all five pieces, you can build your own mass device. So not a lot going on with it, but um, I think this is actually one of the better pieces that come with it. Uh, it's got some decent value for just a standalone kind of piece of equipment. So yeah, this is actually really cool. The first figure we have is Sergeant Stalker, or just plain Stalker as most of his, most of us know him. So, uh, for whatever reasons, because of copyrights or whatever, they kind of had to change the name. So now he has become Sergeant Stalker. It's still a cool figure. Uh, we do have another rubber band holding his jump pack on. So we just slice that off real quick and uh, pull this off. So as far as accessories go, whoops, uh, the big thing is the jump pack here. It's a pretty standard jump pack. Uh, it's a jet pack, essentially. Um, not a lot of detail work on it, but it's got a nice kind of color scheme here. It's a slightly different variation than some of the rest of them we've seen. It's this nice kind of uh, gray, real light kind of marbleish gray color, and then some nice silver highlights. It attaches to his back very easily and then he can zoom off. This uh, jump pack kind of is the that iconic piece of the cartoon that uh, was kind of highlighted in most of the episodes or in the intro anyway so it's really cool and they almost always had Stalker using one of these things so um, it's a nice little throwback there for that so very cool. The other accessory that Stalker comes with is this nice uh, G.I. Joe assault rifle. So this is kind of the traditional assault rifle we've seen in the cartoon and everywhere else. It's uh, really nice. It's a slightly different color than we've seen in the past. It's kind of a brownish color on this one. Uh, so it will kind of help differentiate the ones that came with this set from some of the other sets if you kind of get them mixed up or anything. It's nice. It's got some nice detail work on it. I always love these guns so for me, it's, it's cool anyways. The figure itself, we'll pull his jump pack off here. Uh, it's pretty much the standard sculpt from Stalker. It has a slightly different color scheme than some of the rest of them we've seen. So the uh, camo pattern is slightly different. He's got like a lighter color on in this one than the other ones. But other than that, it's pretty much the same figure. They did a really good job on the detail work on it. It's uh, they kind of reuse this same mold for a lot of different figures over the years, and uh, I guess it just works, so I'm not going to really complain about it. The web gear has some nice detail work also. Painted on grenades, the silver belt buckles, black buckles, all that good stuff. It's uh, It just works really well. They did a really good job on that. As far as articulation goes, the head does spin 360 degrees and has a lot of up and down motion, so we get all sorts of cool poses there. Traditional ball and swivel at the shoulder joint. Traditional ball and swivel at the elbow joint. Uh, just a standard swivel at the wrist. Nothing too special there. Uh, it looks like they did uh, paint his hands. It looks like they were originally supposed to be gloves. Not that big of a deal. The uh, articulation at the chest is here. Lots of ab crunch feature going on as well. It's not impeded by the uh, web gear at all, so that's really nice. Standard T-hook at the waist. Lots of range of motion there. Double knee joints. 
and a uh, swivel and ball uh, swivel and rocker whatever you want to call it at the ankle joint really nice articulation um, the color scheme actually does work really well it does have a little bit more of that cartoonish feel to this particular release and you know most of the time I'm not a fan of that but for whatever reason it actually just works really well for stalker um, I'm actually really surprised at how well this guy came out so uh, yeah this is really a cool figure here we'll go ahead and uh, stick his gun back in his hand there um, yeah overall it's just a great looking figure here they did a really good job the only real downside I see is the fact that he has a empty knife sheath here on his leg and uh, empty gun holster on his side so um, if you have some extra weapons laying around you can stock up and put them in place but other than that really nothing bad to say about this guy it uh, it just works so yes I am impressed with this figure Next up, we have the Baroness in her uh, diving outfit. In the actual miniseries, uh, the Baroness, along with some other Cobra Troopers, jump in this big water to kind of find some more of these uh, heavy elements to kind of power this mass device thing. And they fight this big old tapeworm thing or tube worm or whatever it is. So it's uh, it was a really cool piece of the cartoon. And uh, it's really cool to actually have a representative of that kind of scene here um, I don't really know why they chose the Baroness as this particular figure um, it can just as well be a regular Cobra diver there's really not any good way to kind of tell that it is the Baroness other than the fact that uh, it says so on the file card so uh, beyond that um, let's take a look at the accessory here we've got this weird scientific -y apparatus thing that I have no idea what it does or what it's supposed to do or anything um, it's kind of like a Geiger counter I guess they use it to track down the uh, heavy elements in the cartoon so we're going to assume that's what it is still it has some nice detail work on it it's a nice kind of silver color it's got the green on it so um, yeah it's it is what it is <laughs> it looks cool don't know what it is, but it looks cool. So, uh, you know, anybody out there that knows specifically, drop some comments, let us know. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Uh, we do have another rubber band here holding on the pistol in the Baroness's hand. So let's uh, slice that off real quick. Or just pop it off, I guess, if it's not going to slice. Get back over here. Uh, so the pistol itself is uh, kind of a unique one. We've not really seen one like this in the past that I can remember. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's got some nice detail work on it. It's uh, kind of a small little underwater pistol. So <laughs> for whatever, that's what we got. Uh, looking at the figure itself, uh, we... We've got a uh, air tank on the back, so we'll just pop this off here, take a look at it. And a hose that attaches to the uh, mask here. So, nothing too special there, but uh, there you go. Um, the goggles are removable. So you pop those off and you can actually see that she is wearing her glasses. So uh, I guess that's how we know it's the Baroness. How's that? <laughs> that answers that first question I had. So that's kind of cool. Put the goggles back on there. And they actually stay in place pretty well. So that's uh, not too bad. This little air hose piece on the uh, she's using to breathe with. Let's pop those off for a second. Um... It kind of doesn't really pop off too easily. I guess that's a good thing. Um, 
the little hose pops off the side here as you can see but the little breathing apparatus kind of stays there so you can remove the pack but you're stuck with the little air breather so we'll go ahead and put that back in there if we can here so it actually fits really easily and uh, works pretty well so there you go we'll stick that back on there um, articulation wise we have all the standard uh, points that we're used to seeing here so the head does spin 360 degrees although the air tank is going to inhibit that a little bit uh, you do have plenty of up and down motion as well so uh, nothing to worry about there standard uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joint here standard ball and swivel at the elbow joint and the uh, wrists the kind of forearm twist is there so uh, it works it's uh, kind of a different color glove piece but uh, there you go that's what it's got you've got the chest articulation and plenty of ab crunch feature as well you've got the standard T hooks at the waist um, the legs don't go back very well at all that's just the, the way it's molded in place though so um, not that big a deal you have uh, this weird swivel knee joint here at the end of the thigh so it's not a double knee joint like uh, we've traditionally had it's a single knee joint but it also does have the twist feature on it so that's pretty cool then you have the uh, ball and swivel at the ankle joint the little web feet things are non-removable so you kind of are stuck with them the way they are uh, beyond that some nice detail work here uh, the chest piece here the little thing holding the air tank on is done really nicely got some nice detail work on the shoulder pads the nice cobra logo on her chest and some nice silver highlights on her belt uh, beyond that you know, not a whole lot going on here um, so it's kind of a bland figure to be honest with you but uh, it does work for what it's intended here uh, it's a diver so you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, accessories or anything like that because you're theoretically underwater and you're not going to get distracted by having a lot of things I guess you don't want things weighing you down So she can hold on to that uh, crazy gizmo and uh, swim around and shoot people. So I guess that's what we're looking for in a diver baroness figure. Then that's what we get. So yay for that. So yeah, I'm a little torn on this figure. It's uh, not the best in the world, but it's definitely not the worst. It's nice that they have included something like this, and it does definitely go with the cartoon theme here. So pretty cool for that reason but uh, beyond that not really that interesting so next up we have the Cobra Trooper uh, this is actually a pretty cool figure. Um, I mean, it's a basic Cobra Trooper, so it's not going to be all that uh, eh, awe-inspiring. But um, I honestly do like the way that this particular figure looks, and I think it has to do with the, the paint job on it. Um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump to the accessories here first. We have this cool assault rifle weapon thing. <laughs> Uh, we've seen it in the past, so it's uh, not really all that special. It's got some nice detail work on it. It also is in that kind of uh, brownish gold color that uh, Stalker's rifle came in. So it's a nice way to kind of differentiate it from previous weapons. Still really nice, though. And I'm including this uh, tray thing here. Um, as an accessory for the Cobra Trooper because it was positioned that way in the packaging. So let's take a look at it here. Uh, it does come with three of these different hard element pieces. So they're kind of just a cube with some light detail work on it. 
the colors may not be showing up real well here, but uh, in person they're much brighter than I think they're probably showing up here. It's a really bright orange. You got a cool bright blue here. And this uh, weird sand color looking thing. So very nice. It's uh, supposed to, I guess, uh, represent most of the different types of elements in the world. So the water, earth, I don't know. Yeah. If y'all have better ideas, let me know. As far as the actual uh, sled itself goes, it has these weird uh, molded wheels. They don't spin, but it does kind of drag it around yourself. It's not really that big of a deal. Not a whole lot going on. There are these indentations in it that your heavy elements kind of line up with. Um, but it's real basic indentation. It doesn't really hold anything in place. So you hit a bump with this thing and they're going to go everywhere. Has a nice handlebar here. Uh, the handlebar is removable if you want to. You can do that. But then it's just a sled, I guess, at that point. So I don't know. But uh, it's cool. It's an accessory. You get it. So and be happy with it, I guess. <laughs> Let's move on to the uh, trooper himself. He does have an accessory as a knife on his side. So uh, pretty standard kind of bayonet kind of uh, knife that all of these troopers come with. Nothing really special there. The helmet is not removable on this guy. The head is, but the helmet isn't. Ah, well, it is. You just got to pry on it a little bit. So that's cool. Take a look at the actual helmet itself. Uh, pretty straightforward. Two-tone, black on the inside, blue on the outside. Fits on really easily. Um, it's not coming off too too easily either, so that's good. Detail-wise, this is uh, pretty much the same as all the rest of the Cobra Trooper line that we've seen. So really nothing special to set it apart. The big thing is just the fact that they have uh, put a lot of white on his suit. It strangely just works well for my taste, for whatever reason. Um, it does kind of set him apart a little bit more than uh, some of the other figures that we've seen. Uh, the, they need to do a little bit better job on the paint on the uh, knee pad on this one, but... Um, yeah, for whatever reason, I really just like it. It it works well. So, whoever thought that up, uh, good job. It definitely worked. <laughs> uh, as far as the articulation goes, the head does spin 360 degrees when you're not popping the helmet off. Uh, it does have up and down motion on the head as well. Standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joint. Got a nice Cobra logo on his side arm there. Uh, ball and swivel at the elbow joint as well. Uh, standard swivel at the wrist. We've got the chest articulation side to side. And not a lot of ab crunch feature on this one for whatever reason. He is bald underneath his helmet here. Put that back on there. He looks better with the helmet. Standard uh, T-hook at the waist double knee joints and uh, ball and swivel at the ankle joint so all in all very cool very nice articulation uh the figure itself just works um i mean it's a standard cobra trooper we've got plenty of these things laying around everywhere uh so i do like having a slightly different one with the uh the white paint job on it so yeah, I'm actually a little bit more surprised about this figure than I thought. Uh, it is, again, just a standard Cobra Trooper, but I actually really like it. So there you go. The last figure in the set is Snake Eyes. 
And uh, as I mentioned before, we get this really cool radioactive snake eyes in this particular set. So very cool looking. Um, let's take a look at the accessories first. And we're going to start with Timber. This is the same sculpt we've seen in uh, other releases of Snake Eyes and Timber. It's got a slightly different paint job here. He looks uh, kind of raccoonish around the eyes. Got some glowing yellow going on there. So uh, very cool. Uh, this was meant to be, again, kind of a nod back to the cartoon itself. And uh, Timber looked a little different in the cartoon. So hence why it kind of looks a little different here. So it's nice to kind of have, uh, again, a way to differentiate it from some other versions of timber here. But still, it's a really good sculpt here. Really awesome detail work on all the fur. Uh, just a really good version of timber here. So, yeah. Just to point out, in the, uh, the DVD that's included with this is the first time we actually see Snake Eyes rescue timber. And they start their mutual bond, friendship of whatever... So it's cool to have that in the set here. The uh, weapon we get is the standard assault rifle from the G.I. Joe squad. Uh, this is the same rifle that we got with uh, Stalker in this set as well, so uh, nothing really that's different about it. Again, it's got this kind of uh, brownish gold coloring to it, but beyond that, it's the standard rifle. You can't have too many of these laying around. We have this cool canister here uh, that's strapped in with a rubber band to his forearm. Let's pull this off if we can. There we go. And take a look at this by itself. So this is supposed to represent the uh, radioactive canister of the heavy element that uh, Snake Eyes is trying to find and rescue. It's a really cool looking piece of equipment here. You've got some nice silver on one side and the uh, radioactive glowing element on one. So it's pretty cool. Uh, without that rubber band though, it's kind of hard for him to uh, hold this thing. Uh, you do kind of have to tuck it into his body a little bit, but um, surprisingly they did kind of get it to work here. So I guess the way they have the uh, hand sculpted here just kind of fits so he can carry it around like so so yeah it works probably going to get lost pretty easily so just uh kind of watch out for it moving on to snake eyes himself again this is a uh, radioactive snake eyes would be the way i would describe them and it's actually a really cool looking figure here they've done some uh really interesting paint apps here They've kind of molded the actual figure itself, uh, at least parts of the figure, in this translucent color, which is why we've got the kind of glowy bits here. And then they've lightly painted over some of the rest of it, so it does create an interesting effect that makes it look like he has uh, got radiation poisoning, so it, it definitely works. It's definitely odd, but... Yeah, taken out of in context with the actual cartoon series, it, it's perfect. It works really well. Really nice. Uh, the only downside I can say is that they didn't quite match up the colors of gray between the rest of his body and his arms and legs, so the extremities. Slight nitpick there, but, uh, you know, anyways... Nice detail work on the web harness. Uh, it's the same one that we saw on Stalker as well, except it's done all in black. Nice detail work on the head sculpt. And uh, beyond that, it's kind of the regular G.I. Joe body sculpt. So nothing really to write home about there other than the fact that he is glowing and radioactive. So <laughs> uh, the head itself does spin 360 degrees. We have plenty of up and down motion as well. Standard uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joint. Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joint. And standard swivel at the wrist. Again, this one side has got that weird kind of angled hand. The other hand is normal, so... <clears throat> uh, chest twist is there. Abrock feature is there, though slightly less 
rocky than some of the rest of them we've seen. Standard T-hook at the waist. Double knee joint. And then a swivel and rocker at the ankle joint. So all in all, standard articulation here. Um, they did a really good job with this figure. Again, it's a... Uh, it is definitely a unique take on the character, and uh, they actually did it really well. So I do appreciate what they went through here to try to, to pull this off. It definitely shows that they took their time to try to do it the right way. The only real gripe I have, other than the slight paint mismatch, is the fact that, again, he doesn't come with a, a knife for his sheath or a pistol for his uh, holster there. Other than that, it's a really cool looking Snake Eyes figure. I don't know how often you will end up uh, using it because, again, it is kind of a radiation sickness kind of thing. And uh, you really wouldn't want him out there kind of being radiation-y all the time. So, uh, still, it's uh, I really do like the figure. Uh, just kind of limited uh, replayability, I would say. It's a nice design. It's a really nice concept. They did a really awesome job in execution. So, yeah, this, uh, I guess this should be the highlight of this figure set. Um, but it's really not all that much of a highlight. So, yeah, it's a cool figure, though, nonetheless. So that's all the figures that we get in this set. Uh, you get a cool stalker figure, a swim baroness, a cool uh, cobra trooper, and a radioactive snake eyes. So it's definitely a uh, slightly odd set, but um, it definitely works. Uh, considering this particular um, box set, DVD battle set, is uh, one of the cheaper ones that you can get. It's definitely worth picking up. Uh, it's got a lot of fun in it. <laughs> it definitely works for what it is. Uh, by the, themselves, the figures don't necessarily work all that well. But as I said, it definitely does shine, and this is really cool. As a bonus, you get the cool uh, heavy elements for the mass device, and you get another piece of the mass device also. So, yeah, I would say... Um, Again, if you can find it for a decent price, pick it up. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, but it's definitely not one that will go on everybody's shelf. Uh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense other than as a kind of uh, homage to that miniseries, The Mass Device. So take that for what it's worth. That's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Be on the lookout for more awesome G.I. Joe videos coming down the pipeline. Drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think of this set. And if you'd like to see anything special in the future, leave that comment for us as well. And until next time, Yo-Jo!